Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the GDevelop game engine. Now, GDevelop 5.1 was just released. We'll get back to some of the release details in just a second. First, I want to go hands-on with GDevelop itself. What you see in front of you, this is GDevelop 5.1. Uh, it is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as available in the cloud. It is an open source and free game engine, although there is a premium tier on top of that. We will look at the details of that in just a moment. But first, a quick look at the engine itself. As you can see, it has a uh, WYSIWYG editing environment. This is mostly for creating a 2D style uh, game. As you can see, you could do isometric style stuff. Uh, you can literally drag and drop things around in the scene, visually compose things. There are a couple things to really like about this engine. Uh, one of the things you want to be aware of is the programming interface. This uses the uh, spreadsheet approach to visual programming, I would like to say. You see over here, generally what you've got is condition, action, condition, action. So for example, touch or left mouse button is down, and then conditions of that what to do in that case. So you kind of moving a characters around and so on. Each character can have a number of attributes. So for example, uh, this uh, character object in the world uh, can have here, you can see the various different sprites that are attached to it. You've got the ability to actually preview the animations that are directly in here. You have editing tools integrated in. Another cool thing they have is actual tutorials all the way throughout. So if you're wondering how to use a specific engine or part of the engine, you can see it right there. We have the ability to provide behaviors. So for example, this is using a top-down movement behavior. So this is kind of like a prefab uh, control structure that you can add in. There are a number of different behaviors that you can add on top. For example, I could go ahead and add one of these predefined behaviors right there. You can also get new behaviors available online. So things are the, the rest the community has shared. Obviously, you could author and create your own behaviors as well. On top of that, you've got the ability to find variables. You can add special effects to things. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and add in um, here, this is what we could do a CRT mode. We'll look like a CRT monitor in that case. You got all the various different settings available for that thing. And let's apply that. And now we're going to have like a CRT graphical effect on that sprite. So you can see it's very uh, nicely integrated tools in terms of the programming. Again, it's using this approach right here. You can extend it using a script if you so wish, but generally you will not have to. As you saw also, you have access to a community or store. Um, that's actually quite nice. So for example, if I wanna add something into the game world over here, I can go over here and say add new object, like so. And then within that, we've actually got the ability. So new object, I can create my own new object of a variety of different types. So you can see the kind of things that you can build into the world. So sprites, tiled sprites, you can create particle emitters, text, um, tile maps, and so on. Tile maps also got a lot of improvements in the 5.1 release, by the way. So you got a, a number of different options over here, but you also have integration into their asset store. So come over here, do nothing. Uh, when you come back into the initial, you've got a number of uh, packs that you can go ahead and download right away. Now, this is actually extremely nice when you're first just learning something because it gives you all of the uh, art assets you need to just start working with things right away. At the same time, you do have a search in here. So if you're looking for a specific sprite, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to search for sprite. And then you can see all of the various different results available. So let's say I wanted a, a ladder. Boom. All the various different ladders are available. I can go ahead and pull one in, add it to the scene. And now it is available, and I can basically start instantiating those into the scene literally by drag and drop. Once it is in place, by the way, uh, over here, select it. Again, you have all the various different properties available for it. We could add variables to it. And again, you have an integrated editor over here. So if I really wanted to, I could open this guy up in the pixel editor and actually create changes to it directly in here. So it's a very integrated all-in-one engine. Uh, it has nice um, capabilities in terms of hooking up to external sources and so on. I would recommend checking this engine out. It's again, available on most platforms. It is open source, uh, free to use, uh, but there is that premium tier on top. And then as you saw, you've got all this nice integration into things like stores. You've got integration into uh, editors. I believe there is an audio editor in there as well. Definitely an engine worth checking out. So now let's head on over and find out what the 5.1 release is all about. Now, this was something I actually advised them to do. GDevelop frequently updates. So they might do an update every week, two weeks, and so on. Um, but those updates don't contain a very significant amount of stuff because, again, they're happening every few weeks. Now, this is kind of a summer release. They're going to do this twice a year and basically bring up all of the last five, six months worth contributions into a release. Call it 5.1, and then hopefully the next one is 5.2, again, half a year from now. I think all game engines that do frequent updates should take this approach. 
approach. It makes it so people like me can cover it. It also makes it easier for people that are using the engine to pick a, a, a stake in time. Okay, I'm going to start development game with 5.1, and then maybe I'll do an upgrade once we hit 5.2, something to that effect. Uh, so it's a good approach. Let's see what is new here. So a big thing is a lot of changes to the cloud integration. Um, by the way, there are a ton of templates you can start with. I'll show you that when I show you the online in just a minute. Um, so no matter where you are, the free and premium ability, you now have things like uh, project and asset cloud save. So you can save your projects in the cloud, work on them from anywhere, uh, and synchronization, player feedback, leaderboards, and so on. The free tier does get access to some of these, but obviously the premium tiers get more. We'll get back to the pricing in just a second. Uh, we got a number of improvements to G develop the core of the engine itself here. Uh, so they switched to WebAssembly version of Box2D, so you're going to get better physics integration. Uh, behind the scenes, this is a web engine. So, you know, it's using JavaScript or TypeScript behind the scenes and so on. Uh, so that's why uh, WebAssembly is a nice move in that regard. Uh, so between improvements for camera rotation and camera zoom, huge improvements to the tile mapping support. Um, we got collision masks for tile maps, including uh, the ability to read in creation uh, masks that were created with Tiled 1.9. Tiled is a free and open source tiled map editor. I do recommend you check that out. Um, you can preload audio without decoding them, fix it to the physics engine, and and so on and so forth. So definitely uh, some nice improvements to the engine itself. I've uh, got a couple more things here. There's that new cloud save they mentioned above. Uh, there is a new action for uh, waiting X seconds, obviously something you're going to do quite often, especially if you're doing something like a large world simulation. So you're doing a role playing game, you want to have the um, the guard go do a patrol every 60 seconds. You now have a wait for X seconds uh, action that has been added in. Uh, error highlighting has been improved as well as revamp for the variable editor. Um, and then we've got, again, leaderboards have been added in from the cloud side of things. So if you want to have, you know, multiplayer collaborative leaderboards there, player authentication has been added to display their nicknames on the leaderboard and to make so cheating isn't as common. Um, and then we've got uh, new game templates available here as well. Uh, the asset store got a number of improvements. We saw the asset store briefly in my hands on portion. I do think the asset store is an important feature. Uh, it does make it really nice for uh, new users to onboard especially. So I do like that one as well. Uh, there's also a new onboarding flow when you launch the web app for the first time. I will show you that in just a second. The onboarding is available in English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish. So anything that makes it easier for new people to get into is always a good thing. There's a new launch page. So when you first launch up to develop, this is what you get. I'll again show you that in just a sec when I switch to the web version. And we got a bunch more coming, including new game jams, etc. So if you want to go ahead, you can check the web version out. And also you can download the uh, new and approved version of 5.1 Stable uh, available for download. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, it's available for Windows, for a Mac, uh, also M1, M2, Silicon, and Linux as well. So uh, I mentioned earlier on, this is a cumul cumulative release. You'll go and check out the release notes on uh, GitHub for the past several releases. You're going to see there have been a ton of, you know, bug fixes, improvements, changes, and so on. Uh, we hit the summary, the top level stuff, but you're going to see here this is the work of a ton of different smaller releases uh, kind of cumulatively put together. So it's worth checking out if you want to get into more details. If you're already a G developed developer and you want to know what has happened since you last updated, uh, do be sure to check out the, the release details on GitHub for more details as well. I mentioned earlier on there are premium plans available now. So there is a commercial company behind G develop. I support this. I'd like to see commercial uh, companies in parallel to open source projects. I think it's uh, good for the long-term viability of both. Um, so at the free tier, uh, free forever, this is free and open source. You can download the source, build it yourself and all of that stuff. Uh, there are, you're limited to 10 cloud projects with 50 megabytes of resources per cloud. So you're gonna get into, if you're creating a complex game, you're gonna hit it pretty fast, but 10 projects is pretty reasonable. And two days of version history. This isn't available yet, but it's coming soon. So you're gonna have version control built in automatic backups uh, for up to 90 days or one year in the premium, most premium of tiers. So you're gonna get two days of uh, basically automatic backups uh, at the free tier soon. Uh, then we got game publishing. So two cloud builds per day for Android. So you makes you don't have to set up your own Android build chain. You can basically use their cloud service to do it for you as well. Uh, two for desktop, unlimited web builds, and uh, two with that, <laughs> and unlimited manual builds um, 
And then on top of that, we get uh, player experience. So three leaderboards for each game, uh, player accounts, and 100 player feedbacks. So if you got testers, they can have up to 100 players giving feedback of your game. So the free tier is is quite reasonable, I have to say. It's, it gets you going. And really, if you don't need any of this stuff, you're not going to care anyways. Uh, again, this is an open source project. You can build it yourself. You don't need to deal with any of the cloud stuff if you do not wish. And then you've got the uh, five euro version here that brings you up to 50 clouds uh, and gives you five times the space per project. And it's have three months of version control and then all these builds go up to uh, 10 instead of two uh, and then unlimited leaderboards unlimited player feedback and then we've got the uber tier at uh, ten dollars a month here you're getting 100 projects up to a half a gigabyte per project in resources uh, one year of version history so if you are working uh, remotely across multiple machines etc uh, these cloud projects could probably be quite useful to you especially with automatic version controlling built in so that is the pricing structure again you don't need to do any of this stuff if you don't need leaderboards or if you want to use a different server for leaderboards or you don't need cloud storage etc free is completely fine. So uh, I, it's a reasonable pricing structure, in my humble opinion. Uh, in terms of running it in the browser, here you can see it. This is actually in the browser, so editor.gdevelop.io. And this looks exactly the same as when you first launch um, gdevelop itself on the desktop. So uh, you got, uh, again, here you come in, you say, OK, we could do start from some tutorials, or explore some games that other people have made. Or you can start building it yourself. And then as you can see here, there are a ton of templates to get up and going. So what the one that you saw in action was actually the isometric template, which I believe is here somewhere. There it is. So it's isometric game right here. But basically pick which one you want. So let's say particle effect demo. We can go ahead. We can open that one up. And boom, you are in. And they got a, a bit of a walkthrough or details of everything that, that you may wish to know. Uh, and yeah, other than that, we are, uh, we're good to go. So that is GDevelop itself. Uh, again, visual programming as the way to do things. Uh, it, it's And this here, what you're seeing is entirely in the browser. So if you want to work entirely in the browser, that is an option. If you want to work on Linux, Mac, or Windows desktop, those are all options as well. It is free. It is open source. And as of right now, it is version 5.1, uh, which again is a cumulative update of a number of updates that have happened over the past six months. So hopefully we will see 5.2 in six months from now. Again, it gives me the ability to cover and revisit game engines at a reasonable frequency because, you know, I'm not going to cover a release that happens every two weeks. Uh, it's just, it, it's not great news. It's not that entertaining to you guys. And I think this is a good approach. And again, other game engines with a similar release schedule, I'm thinking things like Default, Construct 3, uh, even uh, Game Maker. I, I recommend you take this approach well, as well. Do a annual or biannual release. Uh, this seems to be sort of the release structure that Unity are going for these days. Uh, Unreal Engine kind of are moving towards this sort of approach as well, and I highly recommend it. I think every, say, six months is probably when you've got enough updates to make it worthwhile to cover it again. So bravo for doing these releases. And uh, yeah, GDevelop 5.1 is out there. If you have not checked it out, I highly recommend you do so. It is an interesting, fairly easy to use, well-integrated, uh, nicely supported game engine uh, with a commercial tool available behind it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.